Every now and then you enjoy playing a game, only to be surprised at some of the negative things you hear about it. Sometimes you recognize the criticism it gets, other times you feel the game deserves more credit. Therefore I made my top 5 games I enjoyed that received mixed reactions. Rules for this list are, only games that I've played in recent years so they're still fresh in my memory and the games need to be a mixed bag by reputation, not because of ratings online. Let's not waste any more time and start the list. Number 5. Mirror's Edge Catalyst I describe Catalyst as an example of how to do a sequel right, and even after the mixed reactions it received I stand by this. Catalyst removes many frustrations of the first Mirror's Edge, adds new cool features to make it a different experience, while staying loyal to the first game. In Catalyst they added more checkpoints, considerably removing frustration of doing long parts over again and making it a more accessible game for those having trouble calculating jumps from the first person perspective. Now you have the option to activate a trail that leads you to your goal, never needing to stop running, keeping up the fast pace. They've reduced the amount of fighting you need to do, so there's more time for free running, but when you do need to fight, the fighting is more fun. This time around, there is an open world where it can be addictingly fun to try to get a flawless fast run for a mission, experimenting with different paths rather than following a linear path. The downsides to these changes is that Catalyst becomes a very easy game, not feeling as rewarding or thrilling as the first game could be. As a whole, I enjoy both the games for their own reasons, but I like the more accessible, faster gameplay of Catalyst just a bit more. Number 4. Super Smash Bros Brawl Brawl is often criticized for its slower pace and the tripping mechanic, but in all honesty, I don't think these elements are that bad. The game still required reflexes, reading your opponent and understanding the character's moveset to win. Like other smashes, a lesser skilled player doesn't have a good chance of winning against a more skillful player. When I played matches, I always used 5 stocks and I only tripped once during a match, and when I tripped I was able to get up very fast so it rarely punished me. Sure, I prefer playing without tripping and there should have been an option to turn it off, but it's really not as troublesome as it's made out to be. I've had countless hours of fun with friends playing versus matches. Brawl adds a ton of new characters, including Sonic and Snake, to many people's surprise. I still miss Snake in the sequel though, but the most notable addition to Brawl is the Subspace Emissary. This is basically an entire platforming game inside the game that uses the Smash characters and movesets. The levels are challenging, boss battles are epic and the cutscenes are very entertaining. This mode alone made Brawl worthwhile. Nowadays, there's no reason to pick Brawl up again for versus matches due to Smash 4 being a superior version of Brawl, but for the impact it made at the time and for the subspace emissary that is still fun to do, it deserves a spot on the list. Number 3. Trine 3 Poor Trine 3. Such a fun game, such pretty graphics but so short and easy. Trine 3 you can easily beat in an afternoon while rarely encountering difficult challenges, especially on co-op mode. And the story stops on a cliffhanger. But Trine 3 is also a great example of quality above quantity. This is one of the most gorgeous looking games I've played in recent years. The footage of the video does it no justice. You need to play it for yourself, in high definition, in its full glory. Each level has a dreamy, beautiful touch to it that makes it a feast for the eyes. It shows you just how important the use of lighting and colors truly is, making it even better looking than hyper-realistic games. The music is fantasy and fairy tale themed and fits the mood perfectly. The gameplay consists of fighting collectibles through doing mini puzzles, platforming sections and fighting enemies. Like the previous shrines, each character has its own playstyle and there are multiple ways to get through a level. This encourages you to be creative in your options and use the style you like most. While rarely difficult, it does require you to experiment and think about how to approach the next obstacle. This combined with the fantastic presentation makes Trine 3 a great pleasure to play. I've played it 3 times now and wouldn't say no to another playthrough in the future. Too bad the short length, lack of great challenge and disappointing cliffhanger is what gave this game a mixed reputation. We might never see a Trine 4. Number 2. DMC Devil May Cry 90% of the time I hear someone talk about DMC, it's about what an awful game this is, 
entirely basing this argument on the fact that they changed Dante. Very rarely do I hear people talking about the actual gameplay and presentation and why this should be bad. While I agree that the new Dante is not a fun character, especially compared to the sarcastic cool Dante from Devil May Cry 3, I do think the game as a whole is really darn good. DMC has one of the most addictingly fun, fast paced and rewarding fighting mechanics I've ever played. This comes mostly due to the grab attacks. Dante is able to either pull enemies toward him or to pull himself toward enemies. This grab attack is extremely fast and he can do this during combos, making sure there's always an enemy you can hit. The result of these grab attacks is that every fight becomes a very fast string of attacks that ask you to constantly switch between grabbing, attacking, switching weapons, shooting and dodging, all at a high pace with a wide variety of enemies. Dante has different weapons which you can easily switch during combos that all have their benefits and downsides. Some are slow but do massive damage and have a close range, others are good for juggling enemies in the air, others are balanced weapons that work best against certain enemies etc etc. Next to the fighting there are some fun platform sections to give the game a bit more variety and a nice soundtrack to keep the adrenaline pumping. Visually this is a gorgeous looking game with many creative surreal environments. No level feels the same and it's a pleasure to walk through this game. Not to mention the hilariously strange boss battles. Especially the newsreader boss fight I thought was very unique and memorable. Even with the lame story and forgettable Dante, I played it a couple of times since it got released and I loved it. Before I get to number 1, some honorable mentions. Dreadout, one of the scariest games I've ever played. Every level feels like one of my personal nightmares, but the story is really bad and the puzzles are a little too hard resulting in constantly walking back and forth wondering what to do. Pokemon Snap Who knew a game solely focused on making photos of Pokemon could be this much fun? It can be very satisfying to finally make the perfect shot of a Pokemon, but the greatest strength comes from discovering all secrets, like finding rare Pokemon or a secret route to the new destination. However, the game is too repetitive and sure to truly recommend. Super Mario Run Kind of expensive for a short mobile game and you need to be online to play it even when you're playing in single player modes. But that aside, the gameplay is very fun and is rewarding finding all the special coins in every stage. It needs some improvements but I had fun with it nonetheless. With that aside, let's get to number 1. My favorite game that received mixed reactions is... Ukulele! Ukulele brings me back to the time I was a little kid and rented Banjo Kazooie. It captures the same feel, the same humor, the same gameplay, and the same fun of the original games. Similar to those games, you collect stuff. But each collectible is a new and fun challenge. No task feels the same. With every new world, I was overwhelmed by the amount of things to do, never knowing what collectible I want to try to get first. Almost like visiting an amusement park. The missions vary between racing, platforming, fighting, quizzes, puzzles, minigames or search missions. Each mission has personality added to it, either because of a funny side character or because of something absurd you encounter along the way. The game can get challenging at times, but in a good way that makes you want to beat it and it feels very satisfying once you do. Sure, not every mission is fun to play and not every side character is pleasant to listen to. Especially the camera could get annoying at times and I needed time to figure out the controls on certain occasions. But for the most part I was hooked on this game. If I were to have read the reviews beforehand it may have prevented me from buying this game but I'm very glad I had an uninfluenced carefree run with this game and I definitely recommend it to anyone nostalgic for this genre. So those were my top 5 games I enjoyed that received mixed reactions. What games do you enjoy that didn't receive much praise? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.